Oops. So this is round two for the immigration thingy, um, just following the uh, economic segment I just did with my economic brilliance. <laughs> the immigration facts and law. Consistent with the Constitution, what we find is that the statutes at large uh, were actually superseded by the United States Code. Well, I've done a little research on that. Perhaps we can talk about that some other time, going down that rabbit hole. But the statutes at large were the ones that were considered, were the laws, the rules, and the regulations that were consistent with the Constitution. Well, it's no wonder that now they're superseded by the United States Code, isn't it? If we, if we go into this, what we'll find is that uh, there are provisions in the USC Title VIII that are actually the same, uh, relatively the same. They carry basically the same meaning, even though the verbiage necessarily isn't all there. This is uh, out of the Walter McCrarren Act, M-C-C-A-R-R-E-N Act, Immigration and Naturalization Act, INA, June 27, 1952. 66 statutes at large, 163. It says the general classes of illegal uh, of illegals ineligible to re receive visas and excluded from admission in Section 212 are those that are feeble-minded, those who are insane, those who have had one or more attacks of insanity, aliens afflicted with psychopathic personality, epilepsy, or mental defect, aliens who are <laughs> narcotic drug addicts, or chronic alcoholics. Aliens who are afflicted with tuberculosis in any form or leprosy or any dangerous contagious disease. Aliens who are paupers, professional beggars, or vagrants. Aliens who have been convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude other than a politi purely political offense, or aliens who admit to having committed such a crime, or aliens who admit to committing crimes which constitute the essential elements of such a crime, except the aliens who have committed only one such crime under the age of 18, blah, blah, blah. Aliens who have con been, been convicted of more than two offenses, regardless of whether the conviction was a single trial or whether they rose above a single scheme. Aliens who are polygamists, aliens who are prostitutes or engaged in prostitu prostitution, aliens coming to the United States engaged in any immoral sexual acts, aliens seeking to enter the United States for the purpose of performing skilled or unskilled labor if the secretary has determined and certified blah blah blah. Aliens in the opinion of the consular officer at the time of the application for a visa, blah blah blah, whatever. Uh, Basically, so this section goes through the entire thing about how the, the, the people are not allowed to be legal or legally allowed in this country. Well, when you go to Title III of the same act, uh, in Chapter 2, Nationality through Nationalization, it says eligibility. And in Section 311, it says the right of this shall be denied for particular, you know, for particular reasons, notwithstanding this section shall apply to naturalization, whatever. Section 312, no person except as otherwise provided in this article shall be a citizen of the United States who cannot demonstrate. This is a good part. Pay attention now. An understanding of the English language, including the ability to read, to write, to speak the words in ordinary use of the English language, a knowledge and understanding of our history and the principles of form of government of the United States. Now we're going to go into prohib prohibitions. Loss of nationality, chapter 3, section 349. From hereafter effect this date, any person who is in a national of the United States, whether by birth or naturalization, should lose his nationality by obtaining a naturalization in a foreign state upon his own application, taking an oath or making an affirmation or other formal declaration of allegiance to a foreign state or political subdivision, entering or serving in the armed forces of a foreign state, unless authorized by whatever, accepting, serving, or performing the duties of any office, post, or employment under the government of a foreign state or a foreign political subdivision, Council on Foreign Relations Trilateral Commission, 
making formal renunciation of the nationality before a diplomatic or consular office of the United States, making the United States a formal written renunciation of nationality in such form that may be prescribed, deserting the military, air, or naval forces of the United States in a time of war, coming any act of treason against or attempting to overthrow or bear arms against the United States. There's a reason why there was, I think it was seven years originally, this one says five years. There was a reason for five years before, upon application, that they could be a citizen. And the reason for that is because they had to learn to assimilate. They had to learn to become Americans. They had to learn American history. They had to learn civics. They had to understand our form of government. They had to abandon any foreign allegiance to any foreign government. They had to read, write, speak, and understand English. They had to assimilate to become Americans. You are not an American in this country if you do not do the following in accordance with our laws. It's even inconsistent and lacks common sense. This country is on crack, man. I just don't understand it. We have, we have a tyrant, tyrant, that's completely abandoning the law. We've got our own state congressman that says we're going to go ahead and write a law that's going to prove that's going to shackle him because the Constitution didn't seem to do it. And the people are like, yay, congressman. Really? Idaho, come on. <laughs> I love you guys. We're a smarter bunch than that. And the ones that aren't, we're going to go ahead and educate. And hopefully videos like this will help. I would incur all of the chastisement necessary to be able to, to change one person's perspective. This is dangerous on all levels. This is dangerous economically, it's dangerous politically, it's, it's dangerous societally, societally, it's dangerous to our families, it's dangerous to law enforcement. It puts us all in a position, we're already in a hypersensitive mode with the militarization of police and they viewing us the enemy anyway. What's it going to take now? What, kind, what small spark is it going to take for them to feel like they are threatened enough to be able to use that equipment? What's it going to take? And what's it going to take for you to be able to take all of those BSU flags you have on your car on Thursday night and acting like you're a Bronco Nation? You know, you can enjoy football. I have no problem with that. I'm not going to be a tyrant. You can do whatever you want. But don't you think if you're going to be celebrating freedom and independence in this country and enjoy the ability and the rights and privileges and immunities of the rest of us that you should at least understand what's going on in this country? If you're going to a BSU game to relieve tension from the stress of the day or the fact that we're politically screwed, that's fine. But if you're so engrossed in, in these stats of all these football players and all this garbage on who's going to win, Alabama, and you don't even know what form of government you have, you don't even deserve to call yourself an American. And you know what? If you don't like what I said, and I agitated you just a little bit, now you know how I feel when the government knocks on our freaking door every second of every day telling us how it's going to be. Because that's actually going to happen to you when you wake up and see it. So this message really is to everybody, law enforcement, our own state government officials. Let's start paying attention and realize that we're all in this together. And we're not each other's enemy. Or are we? Just a few thoughts I had, you guys. I love you. Bye.